These images are real. These are the Faroe Islands. A place characterized by its dramatic natural features buried in fog and mist. So beautiful that last year their official website issued a petition for Google to implement Street View. Which happened, kinda. Well, it sort of went out of hand and it expanded to something called Sheep View, which elegantly matches the name for this place. So, is this Horse Girl View and Hike View? Enough with Google. The point is that these islands are beautiful and interesting, so let's learn what they are. The Faroe Islands are located in the North Atlantic Ocean, halfway between Iceland and Norway, and about 300 kilometers north from Scotland. Well, technically 260 kilometers north from the closest place in Scotland, North Rona Island, but as this place is uninhabited, I don't think it should count. Composed of 18 islands, this archipelago covers a surface area close to 1400 square kilometers, which is comparable to the size of New York City. There are about 1100 kilometers of coastline, and the farthest away you can be from the ocean at any place is 5 kilometers. The highest mountain is Slatteratindur, peaking at 882 meters above sea level, and the average elevation for the Faroe Islands is of 300 meters. Which is 10 times more than their parent country, we'll get to that later, Denmark, whose highest peak Molehov is 171 meters high and has an average overall elevation of 34 meters. Second lowest in Europe after, you guessed it, the Netherlands. These 18 islands are divided into 30 municipalities and 6 general regions. These are from north to south, Norvojar, Esturoy, Stremoy, home to the capital, Vega, Sandoy, and finally Suvoroy. The capital Torsawan is home to about 20,000 people representing 40% of the total population of a little over 50,000. This means that all of the Faroes together could not sell out Camp Nou Stadium in Barcelona. They would actually fill about half of it. Because of the warm currents coming from the Gulf Stream, Temperatures in the Faroe Islands are much warmer than other places at similar latitudes. For instance, Yakutsk, Russia has a mean average temperature in January of 38.6 below zero versus the 4 degrees you would normally find in the Faroe Islands. As winters are mild and summers cold, one could argue that seasons don't really, really exist in this area because 1. Temperature variations between winter and summer is very little and 2. The climate is heavily influenced by the dramatic topography of these islands, so temperatures and weather conditions vary drastically throughout the day. Let's talk about its Koppen climate classification. Yes, that outrageously complicated and colorful map that was conceived in 1884 and recently modified in 1936, which deserves a video for itself, is subpolar oceanic climate, described as windy, wet, cloudy, and cool. Other than benefiting from the warm-ish currents coming from the Gulf Stream, this location is very important for geopolitical reasons, as the Faroe Islands are right in the middle of what is called the GIUK. The GIUK Gap is an area in the Northern Atlantic Ocean that acts as a military naval choke point. The gap being the gate to the Atlantic Ocean from the Norwegian Sea and Arctic Ocean, the GIUK is very important for the UK and NATO, as it gives these countries control over who gets to access the Atlantic Ocean through this door, hence making Denmark a key player. Okay, but what are the Faroe Islands? The short version is that the Faroe Islands are an autonomous country within the Kingdom of Denmark, similar to what Greenland is. The long version is history, briefly. Irish monks first settled in 1625, then Vikings kicked them out a century later. During the Middle Ages, they unified with the Kingdom of Norway in 1035. Then it became part of the Kalmar Union between 1397 and 1523. 
It then joined the Denmark-Norway Union in 1523, which ended in 1814 with the Treaty of Kiel. This treaty concluded the Denmark-Norway Union and the Faroe Islands became part of Denmark as we know it today. Two years later, the Faroese Parliament was abolished and this sparked independence movements, hence its reintroduction in 1852. Until 1938, the Faroese language was banned from schools and, by the way, Faroese is more intelligible with Icelandic than Danish as these two languages are the closest ancestors to Old Norse. During World War II, we have the British occupation. After the war, the 1946 referendum gave the Faroese choice over self-governance versus independence. Independence won, so Denmark gave them self-governance in 1948 through the Home Rule Act. Faroese became an official language, the flag was recognized, and finally in 2005 the Takeover Act gave extended autonomy to the Faroe Islands. So what about the European Union? If the Faroe Islands are part of Denmark and Denmark is part of the EU, then that means that they are in the EU, right? Right? Nope. When in 1973 Denmark entered the EU, the Faroe Islands decided to opt out due to fish. What? Yes, fish. That's because every member country of the EU is subject to the Common Fisheries Policy Agreement, which regulates production, quality, grading, packaging, labeling of such products, as well as protecting fishermen from sudden market changes, setting minimum fish prices and financing buying up of unsold fish, and set rules for trade with non-EU countries. As fishing represents 90% of their exports, the Faroese decided to opt out of this agreement and staying out of the EU to maximize freedom over these exports. This leaves the Faroese in an awkward situation, where 1. Faroese people aren't EU citizens and Danish people are, even though they share the same passport. So if a Dane moves from Copenhagen to Torshawan, they automatically lose their EU citizenship. But if any other EU citizen does the same, nothing happens. 2. Even though they're not in the EU, people traveling to the Faroe Islands from the Schengen area and vice versa are not subject to passport control. This is mostly due to the fact that the Faroe Islands are part of the Nordic Council, which has strong ties with the European Union, hence the relaxed approach to borders. And 3. Back to the fish reason. Due to its independent trading status, the Faroe Islands benefit greatly from import-export sanctions between Russia and the EU, hence monopoly Russian demand for such fish products. And to make it all even more complicated, there have been rumors suggesting that the Faroe Islands are considering ditching the Faroese Krona, which is basically the same as the Danish Krona but with cooler designs, and adopting the Euro, even though not being a member of the EU, and Denmark being one that is not in the Eurozone. That would be extremely weird. In conclusion, these are gorgeous islands with a strong cultural identity and by the way one of the most vibrant art scenes in Europe, but in search of a clear international status, both within their kingdom and their continent. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more creatively explained videos.